الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذي نصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم افحسبتم انما خلقناكم عبثا وانكم الينا لا ترجعون فتعالى الله الملك الحق لا اله الا هو رب العرش الكريم وقال الله تعالى في مقام الاخر وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم my respected elders brothers sisters and listeners of radio dawn assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh first of all can i just ask everybody please to move forward fill in all the gaps because it creates problems for brothers at the end and there's no need for that it looks nice as well if everybody sitting in full rows so please in front of you if there's a gap just fill it in and sit close together okay so please fill that that gap there yes move in yes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the conscientious and thoughtful muslims wadhkir remind others because your reminder will benefit them and this idea of reminder means that people already know people know the reality people know the truth what they what happens with them or what goes wrong with them is that they forget they become ghafilun they become thoughtless and as we talked about last week they become sakaratuhum they become intoxicated almost unconscious of the reality and what really causes us to become unconscious of the reality the truth is the phenomenal world the external world the physical world its beauties seem so real so eternal everlasting we get caught in it and yet very thoughtful philosophers from aristotle to plato have all believed in this reality that no 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 this is actually imitation of the real this world is actually an imitation of the it, it is a it is a shadow it is a vague and a poor reflection of the reality but we are so unconscious unaware of that reality because we fall in love with the world and this is why the quran keeps on talking about this idea of return you know and allah says afa hasibtum annama khalaqnakum abasan wa innakum ilayna la turja'un do you think that you have been created in vain and that you will not be returned to us now this idea that you know do you think and again i hope you can see the importance of thinking you know i keep on stressing this for my own sanity and my own consciousness and my own awareness and my own learning but i also you know my duty to make us all really think we should be people who are thinkers you know without that thinking we are absolutely not. in fact the quran says ulaika kal an'am they are like the animals bal hum adal even worse than that that is what happens to humanity when it forgets to think okay and what do we need to be thinking about well we need to be thinking about the bigger picture the reality the truth okay and the truth is we are here 
on a journey. We're here temporarily, and getting that message across into our hearts and minds is really a great achievement. And this is the last four verses of the Surah Mu'minun, the believers, which I recited, in which Allah begins. Do you think, do you think that you are created Abbas in vain? Vain means empty, purposeless, meaningless. Do you think your life is in vain? empty, without a meaning, without a purpose, and it goes on, to, and you, you think you're not going to come back to us? Okay. This idea of return, of course, is something which the Quran repeats many times in different ways, and what precedes this particular section is a long conversation between the people of Jahannam, of hell, and the angels, a long conversation in Surah al Mun, just before these verses, in which the people of Jahannam say to the angels, please, please, let us go back. Return us to the world so that we may do good things, okay? Here they have learned, finally, it has clicked to them that their purpose in life was to do righteousness, to do goodness, that probationary period. And there's a question about how long did you live there? Oh, they say, well, possibly a day or so. This 80, 90, 100 years life seems to them e ephemeral, fleeting, so short. They say, it's only, what, well, it might have been a day or so, that's all. And then the angels say to them, now shut up. And this is where you're going to stay. This is your place. And we don't want to hear anything else from you. Stay here. This is your final abode. And then, you know, the Quran asks, do you think as well, do you think, okay, the reader of the Quran, you Muslims, do you think you have been created without a purpose and that you will not be returned to us? And then, you know, this talking about this return, Allah says, give glad tidings to those who are patient and those who when afflicted with a torment or with a difficulty say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to him we are. Returning, you know, this is the istirja, the istirja, you know, we should all remember this and we should say it And of course we do say it whenever we hear a bad news. What do we say? Inna lillahi to Allah be we belong wa inna ilayhi raji'un to him we shall be returning That is our final and this idea of return. Let me take you you return to a place where you originally came from minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum when we bury the dead, finally, when we take the clod of clay and we put it on the grave, what do we say? Hazrat Rabbi, you, mashallah, last week buried your wonderful brother, and I'm sure you, know, you will have done that. You came from here, we return you here, and from here you will once more rise, okay? But this is to do with the physical, the body, okay? The idea that the body will also resurrect is one of our aqidah. But we are talking about the soul, the soul which is immortal, okay? The soul that is never dying, the ruh that never dies, okay? Allah created it, and it is old, okay? It came from the world of the souls, and there it will once again return. And that is what, you know, is being taught here, that we come from there, and that is where we, we will return. But what happens in, in between? What is it that really distracts us and makes us ghafiloon, the forgetful people? What do we get intoxicated with? Well, there are many, many ways that the, the Prophet Sallallahu explained this intoxication that we all face, okay? And this, uh, net, this net into which we get trapped in, okay? And this little beautiful book, Shortening Long Hopes, by one of the great muhaddis of the third century, Hafiz ibn Abi Dunya. I, I translated this a few years ago, and I think most of you might have copies of this because I've talked about it so often. I've selected 40 beautiful hadith here, which, in which Hafiz ibn Abi Dunya has collected a hadith that talk about what goes wrong with us, why we become intoxicated with the world, why we fall in love with this world, and we try to regard death as macabre, gruesome, and something to be avoided, a fearsome 
event that has to be avoided, okay? And he talks, you know, he, he quotes these powerful ahadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, you know, how we can avoid for becoming intoxicated with the world. And here is what he begins with. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna ashadda ma atakhawwafu alaykum khaslatayn, ittiba' al-hawa wa tool al-amal. The Prophet ﷺ says, two things that really worry me about you, two things that really worry me about you are what? One is that the ittiba' al-hawa, that you will follow your whims, you will follow your egos, you will follow your own desires, your fancies, and whatever comes from the base instincts, okay? Whatever comes from there, you will just follow it. You will be people of hawa. Ittabaul, hawa. Something which, of course, characterizes the modern narcissistic society, self-centered, individualistic society, a society that is always pleasure-seeking. That is what Nazism means, okay? Individualistic society that in which the individual I matter, I, me, and mine, seems to be the whole world, okay? In the past, we used to think about you, them, and possibly us, okay? But now it is I, me, and mine. There is no one else in our lives today, and no wonder we have to have dogs and cats, and we have to have the um, 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 guinea pigs and other things as our companies, but not human beings, really. A sad story of human beings, isn't it? Eh? When the best friend we can have is a dog. Eh? So that is really, the Prophet ﷺ says, I fear. I fear these two things. You will become the slaves of your passions, the slaves of your desires, rather than being their masters. The second thing he says is that tulul amal, long hopes, long, long projects, okay? And this is the problem, you know, we have. We've got many, many long projects. And um, Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, talking about zuhud, you know, says that when man gets old, he says, well, when I get very old, then I'll think about giving up these things and concentrating and focusing and being truly man of God, okay? And then what happens? Another project comes and he says, well, as soon as this is over, I shall then begin to think about, you know, devoting myself to God. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his brothers, urging us that, you know, death, إِذَا جَاءَ عَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ السَّاعَةٌ وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ Death can neither be postponed nor hastened. You can't get to it early, nor can you postpone it. It is fixed. Ajalam musamma, the Quran calls it. The fixed appointment with the Lord. Okay? Allah has fixed that appointment. So this idea, you know, that I can, I'm okay. I'll see about it later on. This is one of the, of course, one of the traps of the shaitan. And also the trap of our own egos. And we've got to avoid that. So here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is really warning us to be aware of these two things. The ittaba'ul hawa and the, and the tulul amal. Now, the world around us is sadly based on this, isn't it? The economic wheel and this concept of economic growth, you know, it's all about, you know, the, our news opens with the mantra of, you know, footsie, down, dao, up. Uh, and uh, Nasdaq, uh, uh, stable, or something like that. You know, just like, you know, we believers should be chanting the beautiful names of God, the people of the dunya chant their own and have their own mantra, really. This is how worldly and materialistic we have all become, really. And the challenge here is, how can we avoid that? One way, of course, is to think about death, really. Think, think about the reality. Okay? And this is why thinking is so important in our deen. Okay? It is, in fact, that which guarantees success. The more we think, and of course, thinking here means correct thinking. Thinking about the, the, the beautiful messages that Allah has given us. Okay? I'm not talking here about the contemplations and meditations. Our meditations are the zikrullah. Okay? We think and we say, Ya Kareem, Ya Kareem. O oh, generous one, 
we contemplate and we say, Ya Wadud, Ya Wadud, oh loving one, what a lovely and wonderful world you have created. What generosity you have shown to me. Eh? That is Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, the giver of life and death. Okay? The one who keeps us forever and ever. That is you know, our you know, contemplation, our meditation and, 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 and thinking. And then he goes on to say that, um, you know, the Prophet says, the, what does the following of whims do? It, it says it leads to abandoning the truth and the long hopes will lead to the love of the world. And that is what happens. You know, when we follow our whims, truth is no longer important. And sadly, that seems to be the way of the world nowadays. You just need to look at worldly governments, our government here, the government across the Atlantic, the government across the channel, just look at them. They are not after truth. We've seen this repeatedly. Truth is no longer the, the great goal and principle that we should be aiming for. And this is what, what happens when collectively we all have now become the slaves, our own whims. We are following our own egos. And this is a result of that, sadly. And we Muslims, you know, are warned. When we live in such a time of plague and such disease where this ittabaul hawa is the norm, this is regarded as norm. Do you follow your whims? Okay? We, we see it all around. Our children are being, you know, spoiled by it. We too, you know, don't need to talk about any particular gender or any particular age. We all are influenced by this rotten disease because it's in the air all around us. And we, this is where the immunity comes. The protection comes by knowing, by thinking, by learning, by equipping ourselves, brothers, by putting the shield around us, the shield of ta'awuz, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim the shield of the knowledge of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and through the beautiful teachings of the glorious Quran. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, why am I saying to you, don't follow your uh, 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 desires? Because they will lead to abandoning the truth. When truth is abandoned, my dear brothers, what happens? Killing, pillage, destruction happens. Okay? And it's happening on very big scale. Everywhere in the world's governments are really the biggest culp culprits of that. And, of course, what governments reflect. You know, this is democracy. The governments are a reflection of their, of their people. Okay? The Pakistanis are represented by Zardari. Yes. That is the representation of the corruption and of the evil of that, those people, really. That is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, by the way, okay? I'm, I'm you know, just making that clear because some of my, my Pakistani brothers here get very upset you know, when we talk about Pakistan in that way. But that is the reality, okay? And here as well, when truth, you know, we've seen it many times, how the governments have lied and lied. Why? Because they are representing the liars, which is all of us effectively, really. And that is a huge challenge, really. When, and this is perhaps what is meant, the Prophet ﷺ talked about the age of the Jal. What is the Jal? The Jal means the biggest cheater, the trickster, the liar. And perhaps we are passing through that age of lies and Dajjal, my dear brothers. And that is why it's so important to come back to that greatest Hazimul Lazat, the Prophet said, the destroyer of all pleasures, the greatest mu'idha, which is death. Okay? So, you know, we do really need to remember the fact that we will return to that. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah gives the world to him who he likes and dislikes. He's, he's now trying to encourage and persuade us that we should be thinking about the akhirah and we should be thinking about doing righteousness he said you know the dunya the material things are given to everybody whether they are good or bad okay whether allah likes them or dislikes them he gives everybody you know there he is he's egalitarian however when allah loves his servant he gives him he gives him world no he gives him faith in another place it says he gives him knowledge okay and beware beware there are followers of religion and followers of the world. Become followers of religion and, and not followers of the world. This is what the Prophet is teaching us, my dear brothers. Become the followers of religion. Not a priestly class, not the church, not the mosque, all right? Not the party of Islam, okay? 
follow your deen, the Quran and the Sunnah, all right? And this world is fleeting whilst the hereafter is yet to come. Remember today you can do good as much as you want, but soon you will be at the day of reckoning. There will be no time for action. And we began with that conversation of the, of the people of hell arguing with the, the angels, let us out, let us out of here. And they say, too late. There is no going back now. And my dear brothers, now is time for us to think about that return when we come face to face with our Lord and with our beloved Prophet, with our Salihin, and when we are ready to give our account. How will we feel? Are we ready for it? You know, that is the question. You know, and dying good death and being ready, ever ready, that is the mission. That is what we should all be aiming for. I really urge you to read these beautiful ahadith, you know, which encourages to think, you know, and put things in perspective, okay, about our lives. Because a lot of the time, we are deluded. We are absolutely confused by the biggest confuser, the Iblis, okay? Wala talbisoon al-haq, the Quran says. Don't confuse the truth. Wala talbisoon al-haq bil batil. Wa taqtumoon al-haq and hide the truth. And we are under the spell of the biggest confuser, Iblis. You know, he's, he was confused, wasn't he? Absolutely confused. And he confuses us. And that is why we need to seek A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem May Allah protect us from the shaytan's attacks. Wa akhru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.